Hey, um, if it's okay with you, I know we're all happy and all that the Preds have now won three in a row and that's all fine and dandy, but, uh, you know, seeing as we're playing Columbus, we haven't been able to really talk about this or pay homage at all. Could we have a moment of silence for Johnny Hockey? Ah, uh, that, 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 that's okay by me. Rest in peace, Johnny Hockey. Rest in peace, Johnny Hockey. You ever just want to get down on one knee and thank the hockey gods upstairs that Phil Forsberg is a Nashville predator? Hey everybody, it's Jersey Guy. Hold my beer. Are you sure you want to be here? Hat trick watch anybody? Isn't there somewhere that we owe a massive debt to the hockey gods? Again and again and again. You're the kid again, Johnny. Is this happening? Is this happening? This isn't an ad for some dang cookie. I want a piece of that action. Well, you don't have to tell me twice. What do you have to tell me that is going to make me feel positive? And maybe the Titans won't let us down on Thursday. Friends, walk it off! Okay, on with Johnny's reaction video. Take you home. Everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Nashville Predators defeat the Columbus Blue Jackets in overtime Saturday night inside Bridgestone Arena by a final score of 4-3. to three. They trailed two different times, tied it each time, and then finally won when it counted in overtime, Phil Forsberg scored, somebody from the blue line scored, and a new addition scored a huge goal to give some confidence back into this team and this fan base. An interesting roster adjustment was announced pregame as Jonathan Marcheseau was moved up to the number one line with Ryan O'Reilly and Phil Forsberg, and you had Gustav Nyquist being moved to play with Tommy Novak and Steven Stamkos. As you could find on Twitter, this is the first time in almost a calendar year you didn't have Nyquist, O'Reilly, and Forsberg in the pregame lineup card. The Preds playing the second half of a back-to-back -back after winning Friday night in Chicago. The Columbus Blue Jackets haven't played since Tuesday at home when he defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it would be a really good test of if the Preds were more tired or were the Blue Jackets more rested or a little rusty from not playing in forever. Well, at first it looked like the Preds were a little tired and the Blue Jackets were a little rusty because there was only one shot on goal between these two teams through the first five minutes of the game. Just over seven minutes into the first period, Forsberg with a steal who goes in on Tarasov, tries to go backhand, but Tarasov gets a piece of it and turns it aside. Then shortly after, Play goes into the Blue Jacket zone. Roman Yossi is driving it. He gets a shot off. The rebound comes right to Tommy Novak, and somehow Tarasov stretches over to make that save, too. Wedgwood, who is back in net for the Preds for the first time since opening night, he catches a break when Damon Severson beats him but can't beat the post behind him. Play is a little chippy between these two teams. They do have a history of when Columbus used to be in a central division along with the usual suspects but Preds keeping it even Scott Wedgwood playing a lot better we needed a bounce back game from him after opening night's debacle against Dallas Wedgwood would go on to rob Adam Fantilli with about 40 seconds left to go in the first there is some late stick work which results in a 4-4 four four that will carry on into the second period first period ends scoreless Blue Jackets with a 7-6 edge on the shot clock Kirill Machenko holds Brady Shea about 40 seconds into the second period. Team's still playing at 4-4, four and four, so you know what that means? That gives the Preds a shortened 4-3 and three power play. And Bruno, again, elects to use his timeout here with the extra ice to move around with to see if it will give the Preds an edge to get the opening salvo. The closest the Preds unfortunately came, though, was a Steven Stamkos ringing it off the post. It's going to be so much fun when that damn finally breaks, minus his one goal he had against Detroit last Saturday. Almost four minutes into the second period, Samko's not endearing himself to the fan base here as playing in the defensive zone right in front of Sarles. He must hit a rut in the ice. He takes out Luke Shen in the process, allowing Adam Fantilli to set up a wide open Marchenko who beats Wedgwood, giving the Blue Jackets a 1 0 lead. 
almost three minutes later, things get worse because Dante Fabro is doing his job trying to guard passes or carrying the puck out from behind the net. So he follows former Preb Matthew Olivia. Yeah, that's fine. This is not on Fabro for this goal. Whose fault this is, if you guys watch the replay, is what is Roman Yossi and Colton Simpson both doing tracking the puck carrier, okay? I, I'd like to know whose fault that was and see who takes ownership of it because they both go after Matthew Olivier and guess what? That leaves Zach Austin Reese wide open. Nobody on him to bang it home past Wedgwood giving the Blue Jackets a 2-0 lead. Old habits die hard here, huh? On the way to turning this team into a successful bunch. Fortunately, though, the Preds would answer. Under nine and a half left to go in the second period, teams playing four on four. Ryan O'Reilly carries the puck into the Blue Jacket zone. He drop passes it to Philip Forsberg, who skates in, snaps it over Tara Sauce's glove hand. It goes in. Preds cut the Blue Jackets lead to 2 1. That is Forsberg's. Fourth goal of the season. He is nine goals away from 300. Preds with a mad sequence. About seven minutes left to go in the second period. Don't ask me how that stayed out. Just some voodoo magic on a Blue Jackets part. Colton Sissons must have taken offense to something Jordan Harris of the Blue Jackets did. Because he gets tagged for cross-checking. Putting the Preds potentially in a hole of the Blue Jackets can convert. Fortunately, they don't, or else Sissons most likely warned of worn the gold horns in this game. Sequence under three minutes left to go in the Preds defensive zone that I don't understand for the life of me how the Blue Jackets didn't make the Preds pay, but whew, take a sigh of relief, big deep breath, exhale, and the Preds play on against the Blue Jackets, only down by one. We reach the end of the second period, Preds still trail, Two, one. Preds looking for their first comeback victory of the season. Well, when the Preds need a spark and are trailing in a game, who do you go to to light the match? The fourth line, of course. Michael McCarron from behind the net gets it out front, sets up Cole Smith, who gets it through Tavis Soft's five hole. Ties this game at two. His first of the season. Fan favorite Cole Smith just with a doctor order. Two and a half minutes later, though, the officials miss an interference call by LeBlanc on Forsberg, which eventually leads to Ruinsky putting the Blue Jackets back ahead 3-2. A minute after that, though, the Preds keep this party going, and it's the fourth line yet again. Zachary Haru gets the puck out to... Alexander Carey, he just lets a wrister go. It beats Tariff Soft. And once again, the Preds down 2 nothing, down 2-1, down 3-2, have tied this game again at 3. Congratulations to Zachary Huru on his first NHL point. That kid does not want to go down to Milwaukee, even though Milwaukee's also playing pretty well right now to start the season. The back half of the third period now. Brady Shea has a look with about eight minutes left to go in regulation, but Tarasov gets a piece of it. Under eight minutes left to go, Columbus gets another chance to take another lead, but the Preds escape danger. Five minutes left to go, last quarter of the third period. Definite next goal wins territory. Wedgwood makes a key save with three minutes left to go in regulation. Then he makes a great save on an initial faceoff. Wedgwood not wanting to be the reason why the Preds lose this game. He wants a W in his column. Sean Monaghan with probably the best chance lead for either team. His shot goes off of Wedgwood's mask. 80 seconds left to go in regulation. What seems like forever finally passes. Horn sounds. Regulation is done. First game of the season for the Preds is going to overtime as the Blue Jackets and Preds can't decide anything through 60 minutes tied at three apiece. Blue Jackets with the first chance off of the initial faceoff to end this game in overtime, but Wedgwood denies them. Preds then get a chance but are denied by Tarasov. 90 seconds gone in the fourth period. But shortly thereafter, 
Jonathan marches so along the right wing board to Tarasov's left, fights for the puck, just like Gustav Nyquist had it done to him in the playoffs. We all remember that against Quinn Hughes. Well, this time it's Jonathan Marchessault's turn to corkscrew Damon Severson of the Blue Jackets. Leave him on his back in the corner as Marchessault carries the puck out. Drag move. Snaps it past Tarasov in overtime. The Prince will not be trailing again in this game. They walk it off as Marchessault is pumped up. The Prince bench is pumped up. And so is the fan base. The Prince walk off this game. Four, three. Okay. Has everybody had their fun? Okay, let's all relax. That expelled a lot of energy in this game and not just this week overall, right? Hey, they got the things going against Boston on Tuesday. A commanding win. Props to them on that. And they did what many of us, us asked them to do by winning two winnable games on a back-to-back -back against Chicago and then t coming home for the second half of the back-to-back -back against Columbus. Good. Hey, there's still two games under 500. This is what happens when you lose the first five games. But the ship is righted just a bit. Now, now you, you get a good night's rest tonight. You still work at some things that you got to work on because, yes, you had your first comeback victory after trailing after two periods, but... Other than overtime, you didn't have a lead in this game. So that's something to tweak and work on. This team, even though Stamkos is the new kid on the roster next to Marcheseau, you've got a rally for him. He's going home. He's going to be a little bit emotional. you got to pick him up. Make sure he makes Tampa Bay regret not keeping him and get a huge two points on Monday night when they play the Bulls. And then, and then, the week's going to be fun because, yeah, you get Tuesday and Wednesday off, but then you play the Oilers on Halloween in Nashville. And guess who comes to town on Saturday again? A team you're probably going to be fighting for the division, much less the second and third slot in the standings, Colorado next Saturday night. Okay? But anyways, hey, Props to you for winning three in a row. I'm not going to say this team has completely turned the corner yet, but I'm liking what I see through the last three games before the five games that preceded them. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click a like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media, as always, by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Redemption. Huh. You know the only... Thing that would beat watching Marcheseau score the game-winning goal in overtime in this game would be seeing Stammer score the game-winning goal in regulation or overtime on Monday.